So, okay, wound drains. What's a hemovac drain? Have you guys talked about this? It's got the section on it. Yeah. Well, Remember actually, that one no. Is the one no. that Not has the, that's a. Uh, Does that have the crab. coils in it? I thought it you push it down. Yeah, that's like in a circle. Back. Okay. Oh. Um, I think you're thinking of just a wound vac. Okay. A wound vac is the one that you plug into the wall and it actually like oh, no, I thought physically I mean, like the section is like oh, you pushing. Down. Yeah, that is the hemovac and the JP. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the JP drain or um, Jackson Pratt, I just shortcut JP. And you guys, I think you can chart it that way too. Okay. Did they tell you that? Mm -hmm. I think you can shortcut JP drain. Everyone would know what it was. So, And a hemovac are pretty much the same thing. There's like Lisa shape. said, they you press it down, and then you put the little lid on it, and that it compresses it, which it kind of applies pressure in a way, like it kind of suctions down the tube. So you got your skin, you know, and it's just like a catheter tube kind of that's sitting in the patient's like wound or inside where they just had their surgery. Anyways, it's in the skin. Um, and it comes out, and a Jackson Pratt looks like a little grenade. But you are going to compress it. You know, you're going to squeeze it and put the little lid on. And that will apply suction and create a low pressure, you know, pulling of stuff out. Looks like a banana. My mom hated it. Like, yeah. Like, come drain it. So, in a hemovac, the same idea, only it's just bigger. Um, I've never seen a hemovac in the hospital. I've only ever emptied Jackson Pratt drains. So the hemovac's larger. It's just a larger. It's like a it's, it's like a cylinder. Kind of random. And you kind of compress it, and same thing though. It just kind of goes into the patient. And, um, they're on. I think these are on page eleven ninety one. Sorry, I didn't give you guys a page number. I don't think. Is it? Yeah, they're on page eleven ninety one. You guys, so there's a picture of a Jackson Pratt, so that might help you. Um, but the idea behind it is just making sure that it's patent, you know. So you guys will never put these in. Usually the doctor likes to take it out. The only thing you need to know is how to deal with it while it's in your patient. So what kind of things are we going to be assessing on a drain? Like how much and the color. Mm -hmm. and how much the color. Making sure that you empty it before it gets too full, or it's not going to be suctioning if it gets too full. And if it's half full, you empty it. Better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, if it all of a sudden stops draining, like all of a sudden, then That's you fine. need to like you know look at it. Is there any blood clots? Is my suction on? You need to like um, kind of look for a problem. You know, as far as you can. And then, if you can't find a problem, call the doctor because it's probably a clot in here. And he'll have to maybe place a new one, or maybe he'll just decide to take it out if they've already had it for like a couple days. Um, but what we should see, you probably will see like really bloody drainage, and then it will start like kind of go serous sanguinous, and then it will slowly just stop. So your patient might have like, you know, 200 mils out one day, and 150, and 100, and then I didn't know this. I had a patient with a Jackson Pratt last semester, and I was emptying out like 150, 200 mils every like three hours. And it didn't occur to me because she was like a bigger woman and she had an abdominal surgery. She had her gallbladder taken out and something else done. I can't remember so long ago. Anyway, the nurse told me, she's like, you should only be getting out like 40 mils a shift or something. I don't know if that's true. I have never like looked into that, but she was like, you shouldn't be getting out as much as you were getting. And I didn't know that. So I know that you should see a slight decrease. You should never see like an abrupt stop. I don't know if like for different surgeries, there's different like allowed amounts that you, yeah. So I don't know. Could it also be due to like, obviously I don't know, but like size. I, yeah, like, that's what I thought. More, I don't know. I don't know, but just know that it should slowly, gradually decrease and stop. It shouldn't abruptly stop. If it abruptly stops, you can strip it 
where you like grab onto it you know, really firmly and then you kind of run this finger like along the tubing and try to get anything that's in the drain out like a blood clot and but you want to definitely make sure you're holding it so you don't pull it out on accident because they'll just come out like there's nothing holding them in they're just you know they usually cover it with a dressing make sure that you pin this or this like to their gown or you know somewhere that they're not going to be like pulling on it or ripping it out so and just make sure you educate the patient of like make sure you don't pull this out you know um what is a penrose drain she said that's the one that it just like drains mm -hmm. it doesn't have like a collection bag really yep so um the hemovac and the jackson pratt you're actually going to be like pouring those into a cup measuring it the penrose is like this it just drains out onto the gauze and so i believe the way you would measure it is like how many gauze do you go through like how many four by four pieces of gauze do you go through? How saturated were they? What color did the drainage look like? But it just drains out. It doesn't have suction or anything. It's just like gravity drain. Have you ever seen one of those? Mm -mm. I've seen a T-tube, which is kind of the same thing in a way. And what's funny is like our teacher taught us second semester that we would never see a t-tube. She's like, they don't use t-tubes anymore. The next weekend I saw one in clinical. <laughs> so they're for bile ducts usually or like any kind of glandular or duct system usually. So here's my patient's like skin surface. They have like some, you know, drainage and then they come out together. And so it looks like a pen rolls on the outside, but on the inside it has like different channels of who knows, maybe they'll put it in like your bile duct or something to drain. So a T-tube, you don't usually see them, I guess, as much. But if you do, it's probably going to be with a patient that has like some kind of bile duct thing or maybe they had their gallbladder taken out too or something like that. So pretty straightforward. But always just ask yourself of like how much drainage should I be expecting? Um, if the day before they got out 50 mils, we should see a little less, hopefully, you know, the next day. So did day. that nurse call the doctor, or she just... I don't know. I don't know what she did. Well, no, because he came in, and um, I was emptying it for the third time when he came in, and he was like, hey, how much are you getting out? And I said, oh, this one has 150, and I've done that two times prior. Like, this is the third time, and so he knew. Mm -hmm. But he didn't seem alarmed, alarmed, like, at all. And so then when the nurse was like you know that you shouldn't be getting that much. And I was like, oh, you didn't seem alarmed. So I don't know. Maybe for certain surgeries, you shouldn't see that much, like if they had a back surgery, but maybe for like an abdominal surgery, you would have more. Because mm -hmm. it's like a... More tissues. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. But just know that the, t the hemovac and the Jackson Pratt have suction. Um, the Penrose drain is just the gauze. What do we always need to make sure is in place on a Penrose drain? Did you talk about the safety pin? Did you guys talk about the safety pin uh -huh. thing? Um, so as you guys can see, this picture has the safety pin. That's just to make sure that it doesn't go in the patient too far or like maybe we can measure from their skin surface to the safety pin and make sure it's staying in place, you know? So just make sure your safety pin's in place and it doesn't look like it's moving in and out. That's all.